Yeah, well, no, you, Cameron, you've both mentioned that the uh, National Anti-Corruption Commission should be looking at it. The opposition uh, has suggested that Albanese refer himself to that. But now we find out <laughs> that the head of the commission is himself a member of the Qantas Chairman's Lounge, as is the CEO, as are four of the deputy commissioners. I mean, Peter Dutton says it doesn't matter, but what do you think? Can this commission of Qantas Chairman... Uh, Chairman's Club members now investigate Albanese over his links to Qantas? Well, just being in a Chairman's Club doesn't mean that you're corrupt or that you've got a problem. So, so let's set that aside. I mean, uh, I think it's an image problem. I agree with Michael that Qantas should absolutely axe the Chairman's Lounge after this. It should be gone. It should be gone. Uh, There's a grift that it involves, the graft that it involves, shouldn't be in Australian politics any longer. But no, I think the knack is set up by Albanese, by Dreyfus, to get to the very bottom of these sorts of things, to restore public trust in decisions that ministers have made. And Albo clearly made, clearly made decisions by sins of omission and sins of commission. So things he set aside and put off for another day helped Qantas, and key decisions also helped Qantas directly. Yeah, while he was receiving, as Michael says, personal benefit, not for work, personal benefit, to get first-class trips around the world. Um, that's why we have a National Anti-Corruption Commission, and that's why... Albanese should be witness number A for the NAC. Well, he denies, of course, I should put it for the record, that there is a connection between any uh, deals he was, uh, freebies he was given and decisions he made. But the point is that the people can ask these questions is exactly why he should have refused the gifts, because of the perception and the possibility. Absolutely, Andrew. Now, uh, the inflation figures today, Michael, uh, headline inflation has fallen to 2.8%. Uh, that's under the... 3% uh, limit of what inflation should be, but that's only because of the subsidies to power bills, especially the government's been paying out, and they're only temporary. Uh, the real inflation rate, the trim mean, is still 3.5%, too high to cut interest rates, although the Treasurer, of course, today was whooping it up. Here he is. Today's numbers show that we are on track uh, for a soft landing in our economy. Uh, we are confident but not complacent about the substantial progress that we are making as a country. Inflation is back in the band. Michael Costa, they are coming down, so that is good. But what do you make of the figures and the chances of an interest rate cut before the election? Well, I don't think there'll be an interest rate cut before the uh, February um, <laughs> RBA board meeting. Um, and uh, that, that's what's clear from today, because, you know, you can spin it all you like, but the bottom line is it's still outside. The trim mean is still outside the band. Um, and we've also got a very buoyant labour market, and we saw those uh, recent figures in the labour market showing that it's um, still very buoyant. I think you'll um, be very optimistic to think we're going to have one this year. The problem for the government is twofold. Uh, firstly, if they get a rate cut before uh, after the February meeting, I still don't think that's going to be enough. It's likely to be a small rate cut. And while they can argue whatever they like, um, in terms of the hip pocket, uh, it's not going to make much difference. And secondly, they've got a set of deficits coming in budgets going forward, and that will be taken in, into account by the Reserve Bank in terms of um, spending and demand in the economy. So I think they're in a difficult situation. I noticed that uh, the Treasurer started talking about... Um, you know, the soft landing rather than um, interest rate cuts. So he clearly doesn't expect one either. Cameron, can I just quickly finish with you? I know that uh, you're a fan mm. of, of Jim Chalmers. It is interesting that he was out there announcing good news, uh, fronting the cameras. The Prime Minister, meanwhile, was in hiding. Uh, how long before Chalmers thinks that he'd be the better guy to run the uh, government? Well, I think Chalmers is the better guy to run the government, and I've said that on your program. Look, the Labor caucus has got a huge problem with Albanese because it's all about Albo when it comes to Albo, not about the ALP. And we've got to get out there and actually fight cost of living. And Jim Chalmers was doing that today while Albo was in witness protection. Yeah, and when do you think he's going to decide he should uh, take over? Well, I think caucus has got to move, and I think the next three weeks in November are critical, critical for caucus members to come back from electorates to work out whether Albanese can actually do what needs to be done during the campaign, because goodness knows the last week and the week before with the $4.3 million retirement home are disastrous, disastrous. And that was an election campaign. Labor would be gone.